Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it so very much. Welcome. My name is Aiden. I'm so happy that you're here. Today I have my eyeshadow palette roundup for March. I know this is going up at the end of April. It's just been a crazy month. I went to, like I had a weekend off where I was doing stuff and I couldn't film and just things have piled up and I haven't gotten around to filming it until today. So I have eight palettes that I wore in March. I have them ranked. I have notes on all of them. I just want to sh run through and tell you what I tried in the month of the March first. So first up, we have Natasha Denona Xenon palette. This is the one that I got in my Beautylish lucky bag this year. So yeah, it was a pretty lucky bag, especially after I saw a whole bunch of other people's bags. Then I have the Visart uh, Petite Pro 3. This is the green one. Um, I've had this one for a little while. I just never reach for it. We have the Lorac Mountain Sunset Palette. Another one that I've had for a while, just never reach for it. I love the Lorac formula though. Then because it was March and St. Patrick's Day, I pulled out the Huda Emeralds Obsessions Palette because I needed some green eyeshadow for St. Patrick's Day, obviously. Then we have two from Marc Jacobs. First up, we have the Dreamer. This is a very neutral palette, very neutral colors there. And then we also have the Fantasine, which is one of the limited edition palettes that they did. I'm really looking forward to Marc Jacobs making a comeback as we've heard is supposed to be happening, so fingers crossed. And then I have the Dominique Cosmetics Essentials palette. This came in my Ipsy Icon box because of Gwen Stefani. Um, I watched their Coachella set last night and it was so good and I found that somebody recorded the week one so that's that's going to be my listening pleasure tonight. Um, it, I hope they go on tour. I'm just going to say this really fast. I hope they go on tour uh, but I need to get in shape because I my legs hurt from just dancing around. <laughs> in it, yeah. So I can't imagine like actually like being there how much more energy and how much more sore I'll be and they did do a full set instead of just like a little over an hour. And then finally the last one I have here is Too Faced. This is the Razzle Dazzle uh, palette from the Tutti Frutti collection. I'm going to go over these from my least favorite all the way up to my favorite. I will swatch all of them. I will tell you my thoughts and tell you if some of them are being decluttered because some are being decluttered. It's Yep, we're still decluttering palettes, um, but some of them are just not my faves. In last place, this is probably going to be a little controversial. I know this is a brand very loved by a lot of people. It's just not a brand I love. I struggle using their formula, and it's just not what I look for in an eyeshadow formula. It's the Visart, or Art Petite Pro 3. I know people love their products, so I love that it's so cute. It's tiny. It's about the size of a credit card. It is that tiny. Uh, you do get eight shades in there. You have four shimmers and four mattes. This is why I'm not crazy about it. This is them swatch. This is just one dip in there. Yes, you can build it up, but it takes a lot of work to build up the mattes. And I just, I don't want to do that much work. Like I don't want it too bold all of a sudden. Like today I was struggling a little bit to blend out like what's in my crease. So that was a little too much, but I want, I want a mix between those two. Uh, and I just, I struggle with application of Visart. The shimmers I also find are not shimmery enough. That first one looks nice, this one right here, but the other ones are just kind of lackluster. The green wasn't, didn't really perform well for me. I'm trying to keep my face in because then it changes colors otherwise. Um, so. I struggle with Visart. I know people really love them. They love the formulas. They don't want bold shimmers. I want shimmers, shimmers, shimmers. The, what I'm wearing today it does not have that shimmer, shimmer, shimmer that I want. Um, the one in the crease is better than the ones that I put on my eyes, or uh, my lids. So just not my favorite formula. The color story I kind of like. It's it's pretty neutral, but it has that purple and those greens. So I enjoy that aspect of it. It's just. I don't want to struggle with it. I don't want to be frustrated with it. And I'd rather somebody who likes the brand and likes this formula, use it and get use of it. In case it wasn't clear, the Vice Art, I am decluttering. So that's declutter number one. Declutter number two is going to be the palette in seventh place, which is, this kills me to declutter one of my Lorac unzipped 
palettes. This is the Mountain Sunset. Um, the whole point of this one, the whole problem with this one, I should say, is that it's just, it's a color story. It's not a color story that I reach for. It's not one that I wear. And every time I wore it, I was like, yeah, it looks fine, but I don't love the colors on me. I don't feel confident. I don't feel like myself. It's just these colors don't do it for me. So strictly because of the colors and not because of the formula, this formula is so good. I love the Lorac unzipped, uh, Lorac. Why does that sound weird to my ears? I love their unzipped formula. This is one of my favorite formulas. I have all of the unzipped palettes and other than this one, I'm keeping all of them. So here we go. I mean, those first two shimmers are gorgeous. I love those. Um, even this other shimmer here is pretty nice. It's not my favorite, but those first two right here, oh, love those. It's just the dark kind of grayish purple, the grayish green, the grayish blue, just not colors that I really reach for um, or feel really confident in. So I'm going to declutter it. I forgot to tell you my notes. So going back to Visart for one second, I said very blah, the mattes are nice enough. Uh, wish the shimmers would pop though. Uh, once you build them up, they're fine. For this one, I said the color story is just okay. The shades work well, um, but not a lot that I feel co confident in. So yeah, we're going to declutter this one. I feel it, I feel it in my soul, like, man. But I want someone to love this palette as much as it deserves and as much as I love the other uh, Lorac ones. So unzipped Mountain Sunset is being decluttered. Third lowest or number six in the total overall of the eight is Marc Jacobs. This shocked me. This is the Fantasine palette. It is so pretty. The colors in here, the pinks, the, the neutrals, just like a dream palette, I would think. Awesome for work, the peachy pinks, just what I would crave and what I would wear. But the performance, the performance just wasn't there. So here we go. I was disappointed. I said, meh, mattes are okay. The shimmers, not so much, would uh, declutter, but I like the tones, so I'm going to keep it. But the shimmers are kind of chunky. They don't last. Um, as you can see, like this one, that gold one is fine, but this one down here, it is so lackluster, so chunky, just doesn't perform. This one is the same way. It's not even really a shimmer. I don't know what to call it. It's kind of like a satin. I don't know. They just, the mattes work well. The shimmers are just not good. So I would use this one, maybe not use the shimmers or just not expect much from the shimmers and expect them to kind of crease and to go away and to not perform well, which is such a shame because I do love some of the Marc Jacobs, but this one, not the, not the same quality as some of the other ones he's done, which is very disappointing because I do love the, the colors, like the color story, this is like a great color for me. So is that light one, like this one too. All the mattes, really good colors for me, but the shimmers are just disappointing. In fifth place is the other Marc Jacobs palette. This is the Dreamer. This was one of the regular line of palettes that he came out with. And this is what it looks like. It is a very neutral palette. It is good for work, everyday kind of looks. And this is what the shades look like. We have a lot of really light shades in here, which is perfect for me because I'm pale and I don't need a lot of color, um, especially when I'm at work. But there's there's not, there's like really dark and then there's a lot of really lights. So there's, there needs to be some mid-tone, like a mid-tone in there somewhere. I'll let you look at those swatches as I talk. <clears throat> so I said good colors for work. They work well. Uh, but the mix isn't great and we need a medium map. So basically everything that I already said was my thoughts as I was wearing this and writing it down. I do think they work nicely. Uh, they're better than the fantasy. Are they the best formula ever? No. Uh, I, I'm going to keep this for work, obviously, because I think this is a good palette for work and I will continue using it. But, uh, not something that you needed to run out and buy, not something that you missed if you didn't get it. I'm glad that I got this one at TJ Maxx for the low price that I did. I think I got it for like 19 instead of 49 because not worth 49 for sure. But it's a good, it's a decent palette and um, I will be keeping it. Top four. In fourth place, we're going to do the Huda 
Emerald Obsessions. The reason that this is not higher is because of the color story. It is a kind of a limiting color story. It is very specific and there are there's a wide variety of greens in here. We got some bluish greens, we got some lighter greens, we got some lime greens, we got some darker greens. So you do get a wide variety of greens in here. Um, it's just, you know, they're all greens. It's not the most versatile palette. So I said the colors work well, but not a regular use for me. It has an interesting mix of colors. And it, it does. I got some different looks in it. It was fun for St. Patrick's Day to go with the greens and everything. So yes, I like it. I think Huda has some great formulas and you definitely get that still with this one. You have some good mattes. You have some good shimmers. I love those shimmers. I mean, look at how they catch the light. So pretty. And those are my favorite part. I probably would use this more as an accent palette. Like the next palette we're going to talk about. This isn't like a everyday kind of palette. It's I want a super green look or I'm going to use an accent green kind of a look. But it's so good. So you're interested in any of the color stories from Huda, they're usually really good. Third place is going to be the Natasha Denona Xenon palette. This one we knew wasn't going to be number one because while I love the shimmers in here, there are some awesome light colored shimmers that I absolutely love and I will wear. There's a lot of colors that I'm just not comfortable with that I'm not going to be wearing unless I need a smoky eye for something and that's not something I normally do. So lots of grays, some lights in here. I, there's 15 shades so we had to go to the arm instead of the hand. So that is what they all look like. Swatch, there is a lot there. There are some beautiful, like this one is really pretty. This one you can't see as well. Maybe if I can get a little closer. It captures the light. It's so pretty. I really liked the shades that I used. So I used several of these. I used like that one and I think I used that one. So I used the lighter color ones. I didn't use so much the darker color ones so much, but yes, the shimmers are beautiful. The mattes actually work really nice. I just don't love the color story, which is why it's going to be here. But I feel like this is more the lighter color shades in here I'm going to use on a more regular basis. I could wear these to work. I mean, yeah, they're going to be shimmery and really stand out at work, but I feel like more so than green, I would be more likely to wear these uh, on a regular basis, the, the light shimmers, but not all the shimmers, not all the, not all the colors. So yes, really good. Let me, let me double check. I, I said everything. Shimmers beautiful, ab absolutely fabulous. Mattes and darks, uh, not my speed and it works really well. That's what I said. And I agree with everything I said. Uh, it is absolutely fabulous. The formula, Natasha Denona kills it every time. All right, third place, not third place, second place is the Dominique Cosmetics Essentials Palette. This one is from my uh, icon box that curated by Gwen Stefani. It's a nice palette. It is kind of boring, not gonna lie. It has five shimmers and five mattes. It's a good mix of colors. Really quick, I said interesting mix. Mattes are all soft, blends well, shimmers very nice. Kind of basic, but nice. I said nice too many times in that. It's a, it's a fine palette. It, here we go. We got the five shimmers over here. This shimmer is probably my favorite. And then this one, the one in the middle is kind of chunky. That's that gold. There was a lot that blew off as I was trying to, and it's still kind of, crumbling off here and there. It went on really pretty chunky. And then you have, you know, the darker, I'm, I'm never a bigger fan of those. And the mattes, I know we all love the black. The black is not a very black. It's more of a grayish kind of tone with it. But you have, I like that first one. That's a nice one. But yeah, it's an okay palette. Not my all time favorite, but of this mix, I feel like this is, the quality is there the colors are there to make it higher up at, than some of the other ones that I tried this past month. So first place, in case you remember all of those ones that we talked about at the beginning, it's Too Faced, the Razzle Dazzle palette. This was part of the 2D Fruity collection. They did three of these and these are fire. I loved these. It still smells so good. Oh my gosh, it smells like berries. I was just sitting here with it open while I was waiting for like my fingers and my hand to dry off from 
the makeup wipe and I was like oh my gosh it smells so good it does smell so good I love the color story in here I mean the black tuxedo shade I could live without because you know it's it's a really dark but it's actually it's almost purple but it's still black but compared to that last one wow like let me do a swatch so you can compare that so here we have the Dominique one right here and then we will do the black one here I mean look at the difference look at the difference between those two that is why this one is number one well not because of the black one but the black shade because we all know that I don't really reach for black shades but the quality of this palette is so good I love this scent obviously I love the this side like this these four these are shades that I love I like this one too this one's a little much uh, but I, I can pull it off but yeah we have the four here the one is very very light I know but it's so good I was so happy with it and I was like oh, I forgot how good this palette was I know like the pineapple one is the one that I talk about the most and that kind of was like my favorite but this one was good so I said can be very beautiful love the shimmers uh, the two blend the two lightest blend so well so yeah really great palette really happy with it that is why it's number one because it was my favorite of all of them there were two that I decluttered I'm keeping the other six let me know if you would have kept those or not let me know your thoughts and opinions down below if you haven't already subscribed please do consider subscribing and please like this video if you enjoyed it I hope you're all having a fantastic day let me know some palettes that you would like to see me rotate in or talk about again let me know down below i hope you're all having a fantastic day thank you so much for stopping by and i can't wait to talk to you next time